options or conjectures to make DIO and even proven uh, in idealized models. So in this work, we provide some negative results for differing input sophistication, and one could look at it as uh, making progress progress towards settling the existence of indistinguishability of sophistication. So let us recall the result by Garg et al. Uh, so uh, they showed that uh, polynomially secure uh, differing input sophistication for circuits does not exist if there exists a digital signature scheme uh, and a hash function and some special purpose sophisticator uh, for uh, these two schemes, uh, signature scheme and hash function. So then uh, this special purpose sophisticator is a novel outputs assumption that was introduced by Garg et al. And the question is, uh, is it more plausible than DIO? And yes, uh, it indeed looks more plausible. And so the conclusion was that different input sophistication is implausible. So what we do is we build on the results of Garg et al. and achieve the following uh, Claims. Uh, first of all, uh, we show that sub exponentially secure differentiated sophistication for Turing machines does not exist if uh, sub exponentially secure one way functions exist. Uh, secondly, if polynomially secure DIO for Turing machines does not exist if uh, sub exponentially secure one way functions and sub exponentially secure indistinguishability sophistication for circuits exists. So, our first theorem actually uses IO in the proof. However, uh, we get this assumption for free. Uh, when proving the theorem, uh, assuming that sub-exponentially secure DIO exists by contradiction. Uh, so now com to compare our result with the result of GGHW, so uh, their uh, implausibility result concerns circuits, whereas ours uh, concerns Turing machines, which is weaker. Uh, however, their result uses, uses this special purpose of assumption, whereas our result uses uh, kind of more concrete assumptions. Uh, moreover, uh, uh, it was shown, it was previously shown that fully morphic encryption along with DIO for circuits and SNARKs uh, give DIO for Turing machines. So if you are willing to additionally assume fully morphic encryption and SNARKs, then we can lift our results from uh, negative results for Turing machines to circuits. Uh, then one question one could ask is, uh, well, sub-exponential assumptions, are they reasonably, are they reasonable? And we believe that yes, that when problems are hard, they appear to be sub-exponentially hard. Um, so now let us uh, recall the construction that was used by Garg et al. to show their implausibility result. And then we will extend it to show uh, our construction. So uh, they use, uh, they construct a generator uh, using a digital signature scheme, a special purpose obfuscator and the hash function. Uh, the generator outputs two circuits and auxiliary information. Uh, in order to uh, show that uh, DIO is implausible, they show that whatever obfuscator you use to obfuscate these two circuits, there exists a distinguisher uh, that can distinguish obfuscation of C0 from obfuscation of C1. Uh, they also argue that it is hard to find an input X on which these two circuits are different. So what they, how they, they define these things in the following way. Uh, circuit C0 always returns zero. Circuit C1 returns one if and only if uh, uh, it takes this input and a valid message signature pair for verification key that is embedded in the circuit. Uh, circuit C2 takes some obfuscated program as inputs uh, this obfuscated program is C tilde. It uh, hashes it to get a message. It uses an embedded secret key to produce a signature for this message. And it adds this obfuscated circuit C tilde on this valid message signature pair. So uh, you can see that if you feed an obfuscation of C0 into C2, then it will always returns 0, whereas if you feed an obfuscation of C1, it always returns 1. And so trivially, you can build a distinguisher that uh, tells the part an obfuscation of C0 from obfuscation of C1. Now, uh, to argue that it is hard to find an input on which the two circuits are different, uh, Garg et al. Uh, assumed that there exists an obfuscator that hides uh, the obfuscate circuit C2 sufficiently good. Uh, what does it mean to be sufficiently good? Uh, intuitively, it means that uh, 
Another is we should not be able to extract the secret key from this circuit or just, it should not be helpful to forge any signatures uh, in order to distinguish C, uh, between circuits C0 and C1. Uh, moreover, uh, we only want to obfuscate this single circuit C2 for any specific digital signature scheme and hash function of your choice. So all in all, it seems that special purpose obfuscation is more plausible than uh, different inputs obfuscation. So now, uh, towards our attack, so we do the following changes. We, uh, instead of using special purpose obfuscation, we use indistinguishability obfuscation uh, to produce the auxiliary inputs. Furthermore, uh, uh, our generator produces Turing machines instead of circuits. Uh, program M1 uh, accepts only the messages of the specific length K, where K is a fixed polynomial, uh, which is a parameter of our scheme. And um, Turing machine T2 no longer uses hash function, it merely produces a signature on the actual Turing machine. I'm um, told that it is being uh, taken as inputs. Uh, so, uh, so uh, similar to GGHW, uh, in our case, it is still trivial to distinguish the obfuscation of M0 from obfuscation of F1. However, now uh, a challenging part is proving that uh, it is hard to find an input in which these two Turing machines are different. Um, so we do this using a hybrid argument as follows. Our hybrid argument um, iterates through every single message of length k, and for each of these messages, it argues that uh, polynomial time adversary is unlikely to produce or forge valid signature for this message. So hybrid game zero uh, is the original game where the adversary can uh, can produce any message signature pair in order to uh, distinguish M0 from M1. Habit game to the power k, uh, uh, it is impossible to win this game because it requires the message uh, of length k to be lexicographically larger than k ones. And now every next hybrid game after zero, it simply increases the counter of what message uh, is acceptable for which you can, the adversary can forge your signature. Now what we do is we show that uh, uh, no polynomial time adversary can win any subsequent two hybrid games with uh, uh, probability uh, difference. This is probability difference less than sub-exponentially small. And we show that, in fact, there is a way to choose the parameters such that uh, uh, the uh, number of games from zero to the game to the power k, uh, the probability still remains sub-exponentially small. So now, uh, in fact, each of the transitions, uh, each of the exponential number transitions in this hybrid game consists of uh, three uh, transitions itself, meaning there are two more games in between. Uh, for these games, uh, I need to uh, introduce uh, consistent punishable signature schemes, which we uh, define and build, and then I will return back and show how these transitions happen. So we define consistent punishable signature schemes which are uh, signature schemes with the following two properties. First of all, uh, they should be puncturable, uh, meaning that you can take a secret key, secret signing key, it puncture it as some message, and produce a punctured secret key, uh, such that it is possible to use the punctured key to sign every message except for the and the star. Uh, second property that we need is uh, this uh, signature scheme should be consistent, meaning that Whenever you uh, sign a message using the original signing key or the punctured signing key, um, so unless this message is the punctured message, uh, the produced signatures should be the same. Now, uh, security level, uh, security requires selective punctuable unforgeability. Uh, that means that for, uh, we consider the following game. A polynomial time adversary A uh, chooses a challenge message M star and it receives back a verification key and a secret key that is punctured at M star. Uh, it is then asked to forge a valid signature for M star. So this uh, entire construction essentially mimics uh, the idea of PPRFs and we get it by obfuscating PPRFs. Uh, and in fact, the construction is the same as the high water signatures. So now, uh, 
how do we do these uh, three transitions in between every two hybrid games? Uh, so we'll use uh, a, a technique which again mimics the PPRF plus IO uh, technique by high waters where the first transition will be by security if IO, the second transition uh, digital signature scheme, the third transition again IO. So how we do this is, uh, so hybrid game zero uses uh, an auxiliary information that is an obfuscation of M2, uh, whereas uh, when switching to hybrid to game zero A, uh, we replace circuit M2 by circuit M3. Circuit M3 is functionally equivalent to circuit M2, except that uh, it's secret keys punctured and uh, this puncture to input is processed separately in the second line. Uh, and so we can use security of IO. Uh, next, going from game 0A to game 0B, uh, we merely change the winning condition of the security game. Meaning, in this case, it would require, rather than message being any message, it would require it to be at least uh, all zeros and one at the end. Uh, so now, uh, security of digital signature scheme is sufficient here because uh, in both games, uh, the secret key is punctured at uh, message all zeros. And so if an adversary can win one of these games with uh, uh, probability uh, significantly different than another, then it would be able to break the security digital signature scheme. And finally, we simply revert, uh, revert back uh, our auxiliary information from obfuscation of M3 to obfuscation of M2. Of M2. Uh, so finally, uh, so regarding, so uh, in order to construct such a uh, generator, uh, we have to choose a number of uh, parameters uh, and a lot of technical details are omitted from this talk and in particular, a big challenge avoiding circular dependencies between these parameters. So most of the extensions one can attempt uh, lead to introducing the circular dependencies. And some examples of limitations that we have because of this is that first, our results only apply to the most general case when you want to obfuscate Turing machines uh, uh, with unbounded input, whereas if you uh, a priori bound the maximum input of Turing machines you obfuscate by some fixed polynomial, then our results no longer apply. And second, uh, Bellara et al. introduced, uh, proposed to um, require that the auxiliary information that is returned by the generator, should its size should be smaller than the size of each of the programs. So again, um, our construction can, so our, our result does not apply to this case, and this is in contrast to GGHW who managed to find a workaround for this by assuming a slightly stronger uh, version of special purpose obfuscation. Um, yeah, thank you. Questions? So in your counter example, you, you generate a secret key for, uh, for signing and to generate the two uh, circuits M0 and M1. Okay, and then you, you don't give this secret key to be able to find x such that m0 of x is equal to, uh, is different from m1 of x, but you give this secret key to be able to distinguish the obfuscated m0 and the obfuscated m1. So would it be more fair to give the same information to try to find x and to try to distinguish the two obfuscated circuits? Sorry, I didn't understand the last thing you said. So to distinguish the obfuscated m0 and the obfuscated m1, you need a secret key but you don't give the secret key to be able to find x such that m0 of x is different from m1 of x. Uh, so you do not the secret key itself, but uh, you need to make sure that, so technically if auxiliary information is empty, then finding an input to which these uh, two circuits are different amounts to essentially existential forgery. So we would get it easily by existential forgery of digital signature scheme. Uh, so what we want from obfuscation is that it kind of sufficient, it's high secret key sufficiently good in some sense. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the adversary wants the secret key itself, but it should not be able to produce the signatures. Can you give some intuition on why removing the hash function was crucial for the using IO? 
so you mean uh, the hash function is the one which was used in GGHW and not uh, in our construction. Uh, so this, uh, so one reason is uh, to avoid circular dependencies. So in our case, we use Turing machines, so uh, it's not as crucial. Uh, one more reason that was present in GGHW is that uh, you do not want to produce, uh, you do not want to see multiple messages that produce the same signature. So you want some kind of unpredictability. So because if many messages map to the same signature, uh, it might be possible to use the circuit C2, even if it's perfectly obfuscated to leak the signature bit by bit, if you have the same signature many times. So like one Turing machine outputs the first bit of the signature, another the second, and if the signature is the same, then it would leak. Uh, but the main reason is essentially that uh, after switching to Turing machines, uh, we just don't need kind of this hash function because we avoid circular dependencies in other ways. Any more questions? Does your result apply to, <coughs> to public, di public coin DIO? Uh, no, it does not apply to public coin DIO because uh, in public coin DIO you would require uh, the auxiliary, all the randomness used to produce auxiliary information to be public. Whereas for in our case, uh, we actually care that the secret key that's embedded in C2 remains secret. Okay, that's thanks both speakers in the session.